All right, in this video, we're going to go over serine and glycine biosynthesis. All right, so this is a synthesis that actually leads to uh, three amino acids. We're actually going to cover the next one in a separate video, but we're going to pick up um, in the next video with serine. In this video, we're actually going to show the synthesis of serine, and we'll find this branches off down here to go towards cysteine. It turns out these three amino acids, cysteine not shown here, are synthesized from a glycolysis intermediate. And that intermediate is shown at the top, that's 3-phosphoglycerate. Okay. In other words, remember the concept of biosynthesis. We're taking everyday biomolecules from here, from there, we're grabbing them from different pathways, and we're siphoning them off in order to make something useful for us. Okay, So it turns out we, our cells, can take 3-phosphoglycerate and transform them into serine, glycine, and cysteine. So this is a glycolytic intermediate, but we're going to take it and use it for something else. Okay, Now initially, 3-phosphoglycerate is going to be oxidized by phosphoglycerate dehydrogenase into 3-phosphohydroxypyruvate, and then that's going to be transaminated by phosphoserine aminotransferase. We know about transaminase reactions. This carbonyl right here is going to be replaced with an amine. And this is 3-phosphoserine. Looks an awful lot like serine, except it has a phosphate. So we're going to hydrolyze that phosphate off with phosphoserine phosphatase, which is going to give us serine. That's the biosynthesis of serine. Now, as we'll show in the next video, the serine can go into a separate pathway that diverges from this one in which you get cysteine biosynthesis. But in this one, I want to focus on going from serine to glycine. And there's an important implication in this reaction, which is called serine hydroxymethyltransferase. Turns out that serine hydroxymethyltransferase converts serine to glycine. This reaction is also reversible from glycine to serine, and that would be the catabolic direction. Um, however, in the anabolic direction, it goes this way. And it turns out that when we do this biosynthesis direction from serine to glycine, there's one really important product that we get, and I have my mouse on it right now. It's called methylene tetrahydrofolate. Methylene tetrahydrofolate is important for two reasons. Number one, this molecule right here is used in thymine synthesis. Okay, so if you ever want to synthesize the, new, the nitrogenous base for DNA, thymine, you have to have plenty of methylene tetrahydrofolate around. The other thing this does is it reacts with another enzyme called methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase, which gives methyl tetrahydrofolate. And that methyl group that's on the methyl tetrahydrofolate is used to make s methionine or SAM, which we saw in the SAM cycle in a previous video. Okay, That was actually originally in the amino acid catabolism playlist, but I put it in this playlist also. So this methylene tetrahydrofolate has some really important implications for other pathways, which in general are going to be nucleotide synthesis and then also SAM synthesis, Okay, which remember SAM normally is what we call the universal methyl group donor. But in any case, we get glycine out of that. Okay, So this is a pathway that we can do, and that ultimately means that serine glycine and then also cysteine, which we're going to see in the next video, those are non-essential amino acids, meaning we can get those through, those through the diet. Now, this is a, a little bit of an unusual pathway because most of the time, for most pathways, there are exceptions. And again, when we talk about taurine synthesis, uh, we'll see that's an exception too. But in general, most biosynthetic pathways are going to consume energy, meaning they are going to consume ATP. They're going to consume NADH or NADPH, mostly NADPH. This is unusual because we actually generate an NADH. Okay? The reason we're able to do that is actually because 3-phosphoglycerate um, is already relatively high in energy because it comes from glycolysis. So we're able to siphon off an NADH and use that in the electron transport chain in complex 1 okay? to fuel ATP synthesis. All right? But this is how you get from 3-phosphoglycerate to serine glycine. And then in the next video, we'll look at the biosynthesis of cysteine. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.